Welcome to this video where we'll discuss how to build a system of differential equations based on a graphical model. I will here depict the graphical models by using symbols based on the systems biology graphical notations. This symbol is used to depict the variable in the system, whereas this arrow represents a reaction. This symbol is used to represent a source or a sink which means that it is not a variable and should therefore not be included in the equations. K is here the parameter, which defines the rate of the reaction. This system could for example represent the degradation of caffeine in the body after a cup of coffee. The degradation rate of caffeine is here 0 0.15 per hour, which means that approximately 15% of the caffeine molecules will be degraded each hour. The initial amount of caffeine in the body is here set to 70 mg, which might represent the amount of caffeine we have in the body after a cup of coffee. In this example, X therefore represents the caffeine in the body over time, whereas this arrow represents the degradation of the caffeine molecules. This symbol means that the caffeine molecules have left the body or been degraded to something else. Since we only have one variable in our system, we only need one differential equation. This equation should describe the change of x over time. The time unit in our example is hours. Since this arrow points away from compartment X. We first need a minus sign here, because there should be a reduction in X. The speed of the reaction is determined by the parameter K, which we know is 0 0.15 per hour. Note that this can be seen as we remove a proportion of approximately 15% per hour, which means that we should multiply K with X because the variable x will then approximately decrease by 15% each hour. Note that k is the continuous decay rate, which is approximately equal to the discrete decay rate for small values, as we have discussed in previous videos. We are now done with the equation. We can, for example, now solve this equation numerically in R, which we discussed in the previous video, and simulate how the amount of caffeine changes over time in the body. If we plot how X changes over time, we can see how the amount of caffeine is degraded over time. Since the initial amount of caffeine is 70, there is 70 mg at time point zero, when we remove approximately 15% each hour. That will result in exponential decay. After about 25 hours, there will be almost no caffeine left in the body. We will now create a differential equation based on the following model. This model could for example represent that we drink coffee continuously. Drinking coffee continuously is of course not easy, but suppose that we take small sips of coffee every minute, and that we from these sips get an intake of 50 mg of caffeine each hour, which may represent that we drink one small cup of coffee every hour. A continuous amount of caffeine that enters the body can be depicted like this, where the consumption rate is 50 mg per hour. This symbol represents that there is an infinite source of caffeine, which means that we drink coffee continuously and that the source of coffee never ends. Note that the initial amount of caffeine at time point zero is, in this example, zero, which means that we have no caffeine in the body before we start to drink coffee continuously. Since we still have only one variable in our system, we should still have just one differential equation. The elimination of the caffeine molecules from the body is the same as before. Since this arrow points into compartment X, there should be a plus sign here, because the amount of caffeine will increase in our body when we drink coffee. 
since we have a constant intake, this reaction is simply defined like this. Note that when an arrow points away from the compartment, we use a minus sign, because this reaction represents there is an outflow of caffeine molecules from the body. And when an arrow points into the compartment, we use a plus sign, because this reaction represents an inflow of caffeine in the body. If you solve this equation by the following initial condition and the two parameter values, we'll get the following output that shows how the amount of caffeine changes in the body over time. Note that we here simulate by starting with 0 mg caffeine at time point 0. We see that the system reaches a steady state level after about 40 hours, which means that the same amount of caffeine that is eliminated during one hour is equal to the consumption rate, which is 50 mg per hour. If you drink coffee continuously with an intake of 50 mg caffeine per hour, then we will have about 333 mg of caffeine in the body after about 40 hours. You set the left hand side of the equation to zero. We can calculate the amount of caffeine we have in the body at steady state. If we move this term to the left hand side and divide both sides by k and plug in the values and do the math, we see that the amount of caffeine in the body is equal to about 333 mg. In other words, when the slope of the curve is equal to zero, or when the derivative is zero, the y value is equal to about 333. We will now model another type of process. Suppose that you take a drug of 400 mg for a headache. Once you swallow the drug, you will have 400 mg of the drug in the gut. The drug will then be absorbed by the blood. Once the drug starts to reach the blood, you will have less headache. Initially, there will be no drug in the blood. The absorption rate is here 0.03 per minute, which means that approximately 3% of the drug is absorbed from the gut to the blood every minute. In this example, we have two variables, which means that we need two equations. Since we have an outflow from the gut, we need a minus sign here. And since we have an inflow of the drug into the blood, we need a plus sign here. Then we place the term A times XG here, because a certain proportion of the drug is absorbed per minute. Then we place the exact same term here, because if a certain amount of drug leaves the gut, the exact same amount is assumed to enter the blood. This system of equations explains them all. Usually, we do not start the right hand side with a plus sign, which means that the equation is expressed like this. This reaction is expressed mathematically as a certain proportion is removed from the first equation that enters the second equation. For example, if one milligram of the drug is removed from the gut, that same amount enters the bloodstream. If you solve this system of equations, we can plot how the amount of drug is changing in the gut and blood over time. Once we take the pill, there will initially be 400 mg of the drug in the gut. After a few hours, all drug molecules have been absorbed into the blood, which means that we will have 400 mg of the drug in the blood, given that it stays there, and almost no drug left in the gut. If you simulate a bit longer, we can see that the drug molecules will stay in the blood forever, which is not realistic, because the drug will eventually leave the body. We should therefore include that the drug molecules are eliminated from the blood. For example, drugs are usually degraded by enzymes in the liver or eliminated by filtration by the kidneys. So 
supposed that the elimination rate of the drug molecules from the blood is 0.02 per minute, which means that about 2% of the molecules that are located in the blood are removed each minute. Since this arrow points away from the variable xb, we put a minus sign here, and add the term k times xb. If you now simulate how the amount of drug changes in the blood and gut over time, we see that we have very little of the drug left in the body after about 4 hours. We can also see that the maximum amount of drug in the blood is reached at about 45 minutes, which is the time point when we will have maximum effect of the drug. However, note that the drugs also diffuse from the blood into tissues which means that pharmacodynamics is a bit more complicated than the simple example shown here. We'll now have a look at this system, where a drug in the stomach may either be absorbed into the blood or continues into the intestines without being absorbed. Since we have three variables, we need three differential equations. The drug in the stomach is either absorbed by the blood or continues to the intestines without being absorbed by the blood. Suppose that 60% of the molecules in the stomach are absorbed by the blood, whereas 40% are not. Let's say that 10 mg of the drug is leaving the stomach. Then 6 mg will enter the blood, whereas 4 mg will enter the intestines. Finally, we add the terms for the elimination from the blood and the intestines. If you simulate this model, we can see how the drug molecules are distributed in the three compartments. Finally, we'll see how we can add that the drug molecules in the intestines can also be absorbed by the blood. Since the arrow points away from this compartment, we use a minus sign here and a plus sign here because the drug molecules go into the blood compartment, we will here assume that about 3% of the drug molecules in the intestines are absorbed by the blood every minute. Simulating this system will result in the following output, including that the absorption of the drug into the blood also occurs from the intestines results in a higher amount of drug in the blood. This was the end of this basic lecture about building a system of differential equations. In the next lecture, we'll see how to create differential equations to model ligand receptor kinetics. Thanks for watching.